If points were awarded for technique, Sydney United may well be leading the competition. But the harsh reality is that goals are all that matter. And on that score, Sydney United don't rate too well. The local derby with Marconi was the same old story for the team that promises much more than it delivers. Mike Tomolaris is your commentator at Edenzor Park. It's crunch time for Sydney United with the pressure on to make the end of season playoffs. Coach Branco Cellina is taking no chances and has employed a very attacking lineup. Ante Milicic partners Manus Lamond and David Drillic in the forward line. It's a combination that could provide the answers to the side's goal scoring dilemma this season. Apart from the inclusion of midfielder Chad Gibson, it's a somewhat settled Sydney United with focus again on captain Tony Popovich as he tries to steer the side from the back. Marconi has been hit by suspensions. The experience of missing stars Dominic Longo, Eric Christodoulou and Andy Harper may cost the league's pace setters. Matthew Bingley, though, joins Francis Awaratifi up front. But it's the return of Gary Van Egmond that will ensure stability at the back, while the readiness of midfielder Vlado Zoric is set to cause some problems for United's stern defence. The Denzel Park is bathed in brilliant sunshine. The pride of Western Sydney on the line, not to mention the immediate future of both these clubs as the final series looms for 1995-96. These two clubs are located within two kilometres of each other but certainly have a common interest this afternoon and that is to ensure a spot in the top six playoffs. Sydney United playing at home against Marconi for the first time and they more than their opponents have a point to prove currently in sixth position and United dispossessed coming forward now is Brad Maloney trying to feed the ball he does so to a Waratifi a brilliant ball and a Waratifi only the goalkeeper to beat he should have converted and that could be a very costly miss for Marconi Let's wait and see. It'll be interesting when we reckon all the shots at goal at the end of the game. Stanton. Back to Jean-Paul de Marigny. Now looking for players. Deciding to go himself. And Awaratifi now with some work to do. Well, he milked his way into a free kick situation. Just outside the penalty area. Eight minutes of play has elapsed and we're still looking for the first goal. It's been an interesting first few minutes here at Adenzel Park as Manfred Schaefer looks for goal number one. Bingley with the strike, very good one too, just whizzing past the crossbar. Matthew Bingley, such a versatile player, has played almost in every role for Marconi this season. That one was very close. The one senses that United uh, slowly gaining the upper hand now as Lamond does well. Good skills by Lamond. Drillich is there, so is Popovich. Wonderful skills, this deserves something. It yields nothing. And Popovich instrumental there, providing access for Drillich. It started with Lamont, he got the cross in. Popovich failed with his first attempt, did well with his second. And Drillich unable to go on with it. Another promising move though by Sydney United. straight into the body of Popovich. Now he controls proceedings. He's got Lamond on the right side, finds Drillich. This time Drillich gives it to Lamond. Players running forward. One of those is Popovich. He's onside. Bobby Catlin having a few words to say to Popovich. Popovich knew that the flag was down, went in, full steam ahead, had nothing to lose. Crashing into Catlin. Play continues as Milicic comes forward. Morich 
Tchaikovsky calling for it, receiving it. Eight minutes before the break, plus stoppages. An intriguing battle. Le Mans. It's out for a corner. with the corner is this a moment of truth for Sydney United no one marking Renault and Bingley thumping the ball downfield as Gibson picks it up straight to Zdrilic good tackle by Soros for Cassily Great run by Cassidy. A Waratifi also on the move. Cassidy deciding to go himself. And a heavy collision there with Andrew Cruz. Inspiring run though from Cassidy. Not afraid to push forward. Measured his run to perfection until the final touch. Just a bit too much power there and stuck the boot straight into the body of Cruz, he's still down and that hurts very nasty collision between the pair well this is the incident, Luke Cassidy coming at full steam ahead here's Morich to Babic, also pressing forward well, United have to be careful, they're not caught out in the back Babic with Milicic. Tchaikovsky running forward. Milicic decides to go himself. Great cross for Drillic. And a very close call for Bobby Catlin. Well, they're trying every trick in the book, Sydney United. Not afraid to test Marconi. David Drillic coming in for Andrew Cruz, who hasn't come on the second half because of the injury during the latter part of that first half. It's a reshuffled lineup, as I say, and Robert Markovac makes up the front line for Drillic. Branko Chalina throwing instructions, desperate times, and in these desperate times, coaches are forced to make desperate measures. Gibson! It won't come. The goal won't come for United. He had that ball covered all the way and it bobbed over the top of the crossbar. Here's Milicic. It's a United ball. Most of the attack now coming from Sydney United. Understandably so. It's crunch time. Here's Milicic. Nice combination with Lamont. Milicic brought down. And amazingly, the referee waves play on. Well, Sydney United are receiving no favours from John Fraser. It was a terrific combination between Milicic and Lamont. Nice touch from Enes. Popovic, that is uncharacteristic. Finding Milicic though, and calling on Tchaikovsky to make a, an effort and run forward. The cross is there, Milicic! Gibson again failing. Well, the youngster has had three clear-cut opportunities in this game. And he's failed on every occasion. Terrific header from Milicic, straight to Gibson. Oh, Gibson giving the ball away. Zoric making a rare run forward. Still with Zoric, I'll have to close him down quickly. 
And Tchaikovsky, well, doesn't do much with it. Z Zoric again, a second bite. Reno. Reno now with a shot. It won't go for Marconi. Now Enes relieving the United tension, but for how long? A drama-filled game, but a lot of mistakes from both sides, but it's very high drama nonetheless. Holst. Good cross, but not good enough, and a bad mistake! And Warratifi makes it 1-0. 14 minutes into the second half. Awara Tifi scoring his 12th goal of the season. And it could effectively bury Sydney United for 95-96. United with all sorts of problems. David Drillich playing in an unfamiliar role. The side forced to reshuffle its lineup. And a costly mistake in the back has allowed Awara Tifi to pounce and slam the ball into the net. No chance for Drillic. Here's Popovic. He's playing his heart out now, Popovic. A true leader. Great ball! Lamont, well, Babic is it? Very close. Sean Babic, very close to becoming the hero. And Lamont came steaming in for the final touch. Or well, Popovic rallying his troops. Babic was on his way, tried the shot, and very, how close was Lamont? Tchaikovsky. Three people in front of him, three of his own strikers, that is. Here's Moritz, he's one of them. Checked by Holst. Referee saw nothing. Chilina would have liked to have seen a lot more. And a fair call by Fraser. Babic, Milicic, nice turn. Does that ever so well. Opportunity here, tipping the keeper. It's gone in! Robert Markovac, the hero at Adenzo Park. But let's not forget, United need to win. The score, 1-1. And a thunderous roar goes around the arena for this man. Has come on as a half-time substitute. But he's responded to this man and the crowds. The crowd's pressure calls. It has been a testing time for United. Great finish by Markovac for the 1-1 scoreline. Well, it's pressure time for Sydney United. Moric. Babic is to the right of him. Lamond inside the danger zone. Lamond can't get to it. Gary Van Egmond forcing the corner. Tchaikovsky. Markovac! United running on adrenaline now. Tchaikovsky. The ball falling straight into the path of Markovac. Zoric. Awara Tufi. And Stanton. And a little bit of bother. Great play. Dispossessed by Markovac. Lamont charging on the far side. Sean Babich is in the middle. This is Milicic. Yes, 
Moric. Can United put away a winning goal? Very close. Tchaikovsky. Can he be rewarded with something special? Sean Babbage very close as well. He picked his spot. Hands on head. Right around the ground. They can't believe their bad luck. A fine attempt there by Sean Babbage. And here he is again. Babbage again! Well, luck not falling with the Sydney United substitute. I'm sure his time will come. United digging deep. Free kick and a booking for Van Egmond. So, this is the final call for United. And all attention is on Sean Babbage inside the area. He's a man who can provide the killer blow. Morich takes it. It's up high. The header's there. Cleared off the line. Milicic! He did so well to turn. That typifies United's season. A season of bad luck. The clearance off the line. Milicic doing a 360. And the ball over the bar. That really is the last throw of the dice. The full-time whistle has blown. As we look at the replay, United come away with a point. It may not be good enough. There's still one more round to go. And depending on the results of the West Adelaide games, United may have just seen the season slip away from them. But Marconi also... An important loss of two points as they try and clinch the minor premiership. Other results will also depend on their fate. An intriguing battle, an intriguing second half from United. But full-time score at Adenzor Park is Sydney United 1, Marconi 1. And our man of the match was Robert Tchaikovsky, Sydney United's dashing fullback. He wins a digital mobile phone from our friends at Ericsson. And David Zdrilic had an eventful day, starting out at centre forward and finishing up in goal. We asked him if he enjoyed himself. It was all right at the start. I mean, when I was in the dressing room, it was all right. As soon as I got out in the park, I thought, what am I doing here? You know? <laughs> it's a different perspective playing um, from the back and watching the game there, you know. Those strikers anywhere around that box, it just um, just looks like any shot's going to go in, and it's uh, a different perspective. I feel sorry for the goalkeepers now, you know. Beginning of a season, we're 16 to one, you know, and uh, our goal was to make the top six. Now, uh, you know that we've achieved that, and uh, we're looking at the top two, if not first. And um, you know, we've got great players coming back now. You know, I mean, we struggled with uh, without Halfsy last week, and uh, now he's back, and uh, we're looking forward to. It. We'll have a full squad next week. Paul de Marigny and his Marconi teammates have a slender advantage on top of the Ericsson Cup. Their plus 22 goal difference is two better than Brisbane, who are equal on 57 points in second place. The Melbourne Knights have repaired their goal difference with that big 5-0 win and are one point away on 56 points, level with UTS Olympic. It's here that goal difference is crucial and Olympic's plus 13 leaves them well behind the top three. But all of the top four can still win the minor premiership. The best Adelaide City can hope for now is second place. And their plus 27 goal difference is the best in the competition. West Adelaide have displaced Sydney United in the top six after that impressive victory over Olympic. The Sharks have 53 points, but a modest goal difference of plus seven. Outside, Sydney United is two points adrift on 51 points with a goal difference of plus 12, but they no longer have their destiny in their own hands, relying instead on others to lose. Moving down the table, things are unchanged, but Wollongong is now three points and goal difference clear of Newcastle at the bottom. The trends are still overwhelmingly positive, although the surge in crowd attendances has tapered off. 
Damian Mori was missing from Adelaide City uh, through suspension, so stays on 31 goals, while Frank Farina's double takes him to 19. And looking ahead to round 33, the final instalment for the regular season, and four games will decide the makeup of the top six. Marconi is chasing the minor premiership at home to West Adelaide, while the Knights still have ambitions of being number one on the back of a win in Wollongong. Olympic and Brisbane is a blockbuster, and Sydney United has a make-or-break game against Adelaide City. All those games kick off simultaneously at 7pm on the Eastern Seaboard, 6.30 in Adelaide. And as a special service next Sunday night, SBS will have score updates at 7.25, at 8.25pm, and final results at 9.25pm. So you can follow the drama as it unfolds on SBS if you're not at the games. John, I suppose uh, many intriguing questions to come next weekend, but one of them will be uh, Sydney United, who have a tough one against Adelaide City away. Les, I mean, we try to be objective here, but you really feel sorry for Sydney United. I mean, they've done so much that's right this year, but it just doesn't go for them. They've got to go now to Adelaide, Adelaide City, beat Adelaide City, and uh, also hope that, uh, that uh, the other results fall for them, that West Adelaide, for example, lose to Marconi. But I th they, perhaps they can get a result. There were many positive things in their game. Trukowski, who we mentioned, was quite outstanding on the right flank early in the half. And the thing I liked about him, he didn't cross at first, but took the opponent on to get in a much better angle to cross, the more dangerous cross. And he was very active in this area, particularly in the first half. Beautiful crosser of the ball and was able to set up a couple of uh, goal-scoring opportunities for them. I also feel Popovich has to come into midfield more. Every time he injects himself into midfield, and for me he didn't do it enough against Marconi, a game they had to win. You'll see he passes the ball there and continues the run. Uh, just a late challenge here, it's uh, probably accidental, but it does emphasise the point that if Popovich can get into midfield, Sydney United are suddenly a different team, and I think uh, the risk has to be taken next week to make sure that he can get into that position. This was the incident, I felt it was a penalty on Milicic. There was a bit of a push and a bit of a pull there, and I felt uh, Sydney United hard done by that they didn't get uh, a better result out of that. I know uh, there was uh, talk that uh, perhaps Ante is getting a bit of a reputation for diving and that referees tend to overlook it when it is the real thing. But the, the amazing thing for me was that Marconi in the second half, which was all Sydney United, didn't put any pressure at all on David Strilich in goal. That was one, one occasion he touched the ball and this is the second one coming up, apart from, of course, the goal. There wasn't a cross, there wasn't a shot to test him at all. And uh, Marconi, for me, yesterday, even though they sang after the game at Happy, I felt a little disappointing. But uh, having said that, Sydney United, if they were to beat Marconi without Longo, without Ristadulu, and without Harper, it was a perfect opportunity for them to beat them. But Manfred a little bit cautious this late in the game. Well, he is, and perhaps he's right uh, in his approach. I mean, they, they have to win next week. It's in their own hands. And we could have a draw if, and there's a lot of ifs next week, if Marconi win 1-0, for example, Brisbane would need to beat Olympic 4-1. We'd have a dead heat at the top of the table. But uh, it's all speculation at this stage. The way the league has been all year and the way it is shaping, anything is possible.